Now, on a related note, United States Democrats are still fighting rising cries of anti-Semitism within their party by not really acknowledging the anti-Semitism within the party. Legal expert and author Professor Alan Dershowitz recently wrote that while the mainstream party leaders still hold firm their support for Israel, they're refusing to call out the hate so as not to distance themselves from those voter bases. Joining me now with more is lecturer on public policy at Haifa University, Chazi Kugler. Chazi, welcome back to the studio. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. All right, so, you know, my first question is, what, what's your initial reaction, really, to all these uh, accounts of rising anti-Semitism? You know, because the Democrats are basically saying, ah, you know, it's not really a big thing. It does, it's, it's all, you know, maybe a witch hunt. Uh, you know, wh what would you say to that? Well, first of all, the, the last term that I think that we'll be making use of is a witch hunt. Uh, mm. President Trump has a monopoly on that one. Sure. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I really disagree with uh, Professor Dershowitz. Uh, rising anti-Semitism within the Democratic Party. There is not anti-Semitism within the Democratic Party. I agree that there may be a representative or a congressman or a congresswoman here or there who adheres to views that can be characterized perhaps as anti-Semitic. Anti that does not make the Democratic Party anti-Semitic. It also doesn't mean that there is anti-Semitism rising within the Democratic sure. Party. You know, I'm not in the shoes of the leaders of the party, uh, but by calling out an issue, such as Professor Dershowitz is, is, uh, is advocating, I understand, you may really be turning a non-issue into an issue, mm. uh, creating, uh, making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, for many, many years, there has been extremism on the right wing and on the left wing, within, within or around or the fringes of both of the parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, for either one of the parties to say that those people on the fringes right now, we need to confront them, contend with them, it creates an issue which really did not really exist beforehand. So, okay, so that may be true, that maybe we're making, you know, a mountain out of a molehill, as you said, but uh, what would you say to a lot of the accusations, are, and, and again, for, or maybe the reports of people in the Democratic Party refusing to condemn Louis Farrakhan? and his comments. Well, this has, been, this has also been around for a real That's long time. It's also been around for a long a time, but that kind of speaks whenever, to the issue, is that he's been around for a long time and well, nobody, so he nobody exists. So condemns the, him. The guy exists. Uh, whenever he has become, note, whenever he has become an issue in presidential elections, including when Obama was running uh, for election the first time, the, the true he candidates... He did condemn Louis Farrakhan. But he definitely took a, a very big step back. He definitely... Uh, uh, change the approach that he had beforehand. But, but is that because it was politically relevant or because he acknowledged that Farrakhan's comments let's, were outrageous? Let's say, let's say that it was because it was uh, politically correct or politically relevant. So fine. That just goes to show how important it is for the leaders of the party to realize that they cannot ad advocate or follow or associate themselves with views that can be interpreted or actually are anti-Semitic. But you don't think that that's disingenuous because, again, let's take Ilya Omar, for example, who a few months ago back in the summer said, you know, BDS is not expedient, it doesn't work, I'm against it, I'm pro two-state solution, and then as soon as she got elected, flips the script. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, she herself does not represent the views of the Democratic Party. Of course, party. I'm her just view, using her, her as an example. Her, view, her views are not, okay, so as an example, therefore, sure. those views are not part of the platform of the Democratic Party. Those views are not part of policy of the Democratic Party. Those views have never been part of policy of the, of the party, both when they're in the, what we call the opposition, as well as being in power in the administration. <laughs> the problem that we have today is that we have a Republican Party led by a, a president who has actually incorporated those sort of views into the mainstream of his leadership. He very clearly does exactly what you're talking about. He very clearly doesn't want to, not doesn't want to alienate his base. He views these people, his, anti, his racist base, as being his core base of supporters. That's where the line gets very, very dangerous. No politician, not to speak of a president, has ever gone anywhere near as far as he has. All right, well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but thank you so much for joining sure. us. Okay. Has a cooler. Pleasure. You.